Currently, there's been over 72 million cases of COVID-19 and over 1.6 million deaths worldwide. Despite efforts to stop the spread with physical distancing and wearing masks, those numbers keep rising. And for many of us, the promise of a vaccine feels like hope at the end of a devastating year. These vaccines are being fast-tracked, created at record speeds, leaving scientists and the public with many questions. By the end of this video, you'll understand what we know about mRNA vaccines and what questions still remain unanswered. To understand these mRNA vaccines, let me first take you through a quick crash course of how your immune system functions. It's a complex system that detects and responds to threats like bacteria, viruses, and even cancer cells. When an enemy virus is detected, specialized cells like this macrophage will attack and send chemical signals to recruit more cells for the fight. Some of these cells are B cells and they create antibodies part of your immune system's artillery. Antibodies are tiny proteins that are designed to identify and neutralize enemies. So for every virus you encounter, your body creates a new specific antibody. Your immune system also creates memories called memory B cells and memory T cells. So if you encounter the same virus again, it's ready to attack faster and more efficiently the second time, often fast enough that you don't even feel sick. And this is why vaccines were created. They were developed to prepare your immune system against a specific infection, giving it time to create antibodies and memory cells. This way, when you encounter the real virus, your body's already prepared. Vaccines do this by exposing your immune system to part of the virus. This can be a weakened version of the virus, a small viral particle, or some of the virus's genetic code, either RNA or DNA. Ever since January 2020, when the novel coronavirus genome was first sequenced, the race to create an effective vaccine was on. What normally takes years to develop was condensed down to a matter of months. And this was possible because scientists were already working on the technology for mRNA vaccines back when there was a SARS outbreak in 2003. Plus, because of the pandemic, resources worldwide were being poured into the development of COVID-19 vaccines. Currently, there are 52 vaccines that are being tested on volunteers and another 162 vaccines that are still in preclinical development. All right, so now that we have the basics, let's focus on the novel messenger RNA vaccines and how they work. So now we know that vaccines work by showing your immune system a small piece of the virus. And most vaccines contain a protein, a small piece of the virus, and that gets injected into your body. But messenger RNAs are different. Rather than giving the protein, the messenger RNA provides the instructions for your body to create the protein. The SARS-CoV-2 virus has a distinctive spike protein on the surface that allows the virus to enter the human cell, where it replicates. This is the protein that the vaccine tells your body how to make. Messenger RNA is really delicate, so it gets wrapped in a protective oily layer of lipid nanoparticles, and that's how it makes it to your cells without getting destroyed. The vaccine is then introduced to your body with an injection. After it makes its way into the cells, the messenger RNA instructions are read, and your cells create many copies of the spike protein. Just as your cells normally destroy its mRNA after reading it, it does the same thing to the vaccine, leaving no trace of it in your body. Now, I wanna point out that messenger RNA never enters the nucleus of your cell where your unique genetic material called DNA is located. So although mRNA is genetic material, it doesn't change or interact with your genes. And I think that's a common misconception. Once the spike proteins are created, they're expelled out of the cell where they then can come in contact with your immune system. But remember, this is just a tiny protein, just one part of the virus, so it can't infect you and it can't give you COVID-19. Your immune system then recognizes the spike proteins as foreign, and it creates specific antibodies that are designed to attach to the protein and neutralize it. Finally, your immune system creates a memory to the spike protein using memory B cells and memory T cells. Now your body is ready to jump into action to protect you as soon as it comes in contact with the SARS-CoV-2 virus. 
So this is the type of vaccine that was created by Pfizer and BioNTech, which has recently been approved for mass distribution in four countries, the United Kingdom, Bahrain, Canada, and most recently, the United States. So as a disclaimer, I don't have any affiliations with pharmaceutical companies or biotech companies, so they don't give me any money or talking points. So with that said, let's dive into the clinical trials and understand more about these vaccines. On November 18th, Pfizer and BioNTech announced the results of their much anticipated clinical trial. So basically what they did was recruit over 43,000 volunteers from six different countries. These people ranged from an age of 16 to 91 with an average age of 52. 10% of participants were black, 26% were Hispanic, 5% were Asian, and only 1% were Indigenous people. These 43,000 people are then randomly assigned to one of two groups. One group gets the real vaccine, while the other group gets a fake vaccine called the placebo. And the whole goal of the trial is to see, is there a difference between these two groups? Does the vaccine really work? And are there side effects? The vaccine was delivered in two separate injections, three weeks apart. And after that, volunteers had blood work done to check for any dangerous reactions. And they also had an electronic diary to keep track of any symptoms. If anyone developed symptoms of COVID-19, they would get tested. And when there were 170 confirmed cases of COVID-19 in the whole trial, they took all that data and analyzed it to answer three important questions. The first question is, does the vaccine prevent you from getting sick with COVID-19? So of those 170 patients who got sick, only eight of them had the real vaccine and the rest of the 162 had the fake vaccine. So that's already a pretty big difference. This vaccine has 95% efficacy at preventing COVID-19 illness. I mean, that is huge. That is way better than anybody expected. So next we wanna know if you get COVID-19, can the vaccine prevent you from getting really severely sick? And the short answer is yes. In this trial, there were 10 patients who became really severely ill. Nine of them had the fake vaccine and only one had the real vaccine. So that's a pretty big difference. So basically, if you get the vaccine, you're less likely to get COVID-19. And if you do get COVID-19, you're less likely to become really sick and end up in the hospital. But is it safe? That's what we all wanna know. And in this trial, there were no serious safety concerns. So volunteers described having a painful arm afterwards. Some talked about a fever, headache, muscle aches, but those all resolved within a day or two. And really, they weren't serious or life-threatening. It really represents the immune system revving up and doing its job, learning how to fight COVID-19. Very rarely, like any new medication, it's possible to have a severe allergic reaction but this wasn't seen in the trial. So this data was collected over about two months, but the trial is gonna keep going and collecting data over two years. So these are really exciting results, aren't they? Now there's one thing I do wanna point out. This trial was looking at symptomatic patients. So people who felt sick and then were diagnosed with COVID-19. It didn't look at asymptomatic carriers. So people who have the virus, who can even spread the virus to other people, but don't have any symptoms. So personally, I suspect that we're gonna need to keep wearing our masks even after we've been vaccinated until we know if the vaccine prevents these asymptomatic carriers of COVID-19 or until enough people in the community have been vaccinated. Okay, so that was a lot of information. So what do we really know about these mRNA vaccines? We know that you can't catch COVID-19 from the vaccine. We know that it doesn't interfere with your genes, with your DNA. We know that it decreases the chances of you getting sick from COVID-19. But if you catch the virus, it makes it less likely that you're gonna get really sick and end up in the hospital. And it seems to be safe. It's been given to tens of thousands of people in these clinical trials, and there've been no serious side effects. There are still many unanswered questions. Like, does the vaccine work for kids or for pregnant women? What happens when you've had the vaccine? How long does the immunity last? Does it prevent asymptomatic infections and the spread of the virus? And when we distribute the vaccine in the general public, will we still see such high efficacy rates as we saw in the trial? The trials were done with 
largely healthy people. So what about when you give the vaccine to people with medical conditions? Will it work as well? But this is an evolving area. You can already see tons of misinformation circulating on the internet. So I would love to make a follow-up video to be able to dispel myths and answer your questions. So write any questions, comments, thoughts that you have down in the comments below, and we're gonna continue this dialogue. Personally, I'm definitely planning to get the vaccine as soon as it's available to me. And I'm really hoping that this signals better things to come for 2021. Anyway, be sure to subscribe so you don't miss any of those future videos. Bye for now.